The America of today is not unlike the America of the past. Filled with diverse people from a multitude of backgrounds, immigrants from all corners of the world bring their foods, their religion, and their cultures with them when they arrive in the land of the free. This is how the melting pot of American culture came to be. The population grows into the cities, the suburbs, and the hills. People groups blend together, creating brand new cultures and subcultures that challenge our conceptions of normality and forever alter our view of mainstream. This phenomena has created the need to work across cultural lines in our own backyards and build bridges to worlds that until now may seem foreign. This is the heart of intercultural communication. From Japan to Jerusalem, tattoos have been around since the beginning of time and almost just as long Anthropologists and social scientists have studied the phenomena to discover the rich history and meaning of body modification. While the context impacts every situation, tattoos have carried a variety of indicators from the religious to the rebellious. Mordecai Levi is a renowned scholar on tattoos and culture and acknowledges that tattoos can symbolize a social rank identify ethnic affiliation, indicate experience of religious pilgrimage or a rite of passage. Levi, who is of Jewish descent, also noted that tattoos were used to indicate which of his relatives would be exterminated by the Nazis. While studies indicate that around 20% of Americans ages 18 to 25 have been inked, America has had a long history of stigmatization to the tattooed individual, or the live canvas. From their exhibition as circus performers, to the stigmatization and delegitimization of the tattoo artist through the legal system. According to Irving Goffman, in the recent past in proper America, tattoos and piercings were not acceptable. If you had tattoos or piercings, it soiled your identity. It stigmatized you. Normals did not associate with stigmatized individuals. While tattoos and piercings are still stigmatized in much of today's society, changes are occurring. Normals. Isn't that an interesting phrase? When we take a look at the America we live in today, we see that tattoos and body modifications span a variety of worldviews, lifestyles, and cultures, some foreign and some in our own backyard. Just last year, Fox News interviewed Nicole Harris, a librarian with multiple master's degrees. Sounds pretty normal. But she also has body art spanning most of her epidermis. When asked what it would take to cover up her tats, she said, it's not really possible at this point unless I wore gloves. Then, of course, there are the others. Individuals who have taken body modification beyond decor to a lifestyle of asceticism, sex, and rebellion against a system they reject. But has society lumped these others into the pile with the rest? How do these others identify themselves and how does the mainstream identify to them? In our research, we interviewed a variety of these so-called others, individuals with tattoos, and we found that while tattoos may span a vast array of the human spectrum, they speak loudly about a person's identity. And while society tends to define a person based on the existence of their tattoos, those who have modified their bodies tend to have already defined themselves and they simply express that definition with ink. Um, my name's Lindsay and I grew up in Encinitas, um, fifth generation from San Diego, so I've been here quite a while. I mean, I've got quite a bit, but I'd probably say only like 25%. I've got a good portion of my back and my legs that aren't done. I would definitely call it expression and it shows it I think it kind of shows the ups and downs in your life. I think more of the tattoos I've had have been points in my life that have been a little bit rougher and that's I think when your mind kind of starts wandering more you get a little bit more expressive. Um, I think when you're really happy and you have a lot going on it's kind of like you don't have time for that. Uh, my 
my name is Dan Franken. I got a Jesus tattoo done today with uh, one of my favorite verses on it. And that was done by All Souls Tattoo. Um, I actually wanted to get one. It kind of shows who I am. Um, I am a Christian, but uh, I do like to, I guess, spread the word of God. People ask, you know, they see a tattoo, and they're like, oh, what is it? I can tell them, you know, a little bit about it. I'm Rob, Mobster Inc. Tattoo, Beaumont, California. Tattoo in 20 years. I like doing a lot of custom. I try to get their personality, you know, try to put it on paper, put it on their skin. Like I said, self-expression, you know, you don't really want to, it's not really good to just walk into a shop, look at a picture on a wall or something like that. A lot of people do it, but you know, it's, it's better to do like uh, something that expresses what you got going on inside of you. Well, my name's Tessa and my husband does all my work. So I've been in the tattoo industry for a little over a year, two years. And they all mean something to me. And I don't know, I just get the things that are the most important. I don't know, it's just kind of like me on a sleeve, I guess. Corpo, the very, the structure, it's so, it's so the opposite of what I am. And so it's like, it's a way for me to express myself outwardly. Just, I just like, I love art. I love, I love being able to design. I love being able to just be, just kind of free. I think it, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's been there since the beginning of time and it's been all, all around the world. I mean, it may be different from here as opposed to India or anywhere else, but I mean, it's still marking on your body and it still tells something about you, maybe. You know, I don't really have anything that's not meaningful. So, your artwork here? So uh, I have a piranha on my neck uh, done by Tommy Montoya. Um, and it pretty much was just, uh, to me, it meant just to be, uh, eat everything in sight, man. You know, life is short, you gotta go out and get it. Uh, I think tattoo artists seem to be that type of people. They're pretty ambitious. Christianity, evil, heartbreak, fish. Tattoos and body art speak the language of even the most opposite worldviews. Where else in the world can a worshiper of evil and a worshiper of Jesus come together in appreciation, if not in the world, of body art? But artists have always enjoyed the blessing of unity found in their work, while history has taught us that skeptics and traditionalists work to delegitimate the craft of the artist. Elvis, the Beatles, and Mozart, each had their own trials to overcome in the struggle to be great artists. Tattoos and the tattoo community are no different. In a blog from the prestigious Dartmouth College, Austin Prey authoritatively writes, tattoos are not art. If they were art, then that would imply that biker bars and punk rock concerts are museums, and that is simply not true. In this tacit denunciation, Prey not only attempts to delegitimate tattoo as art, but also places his own ambiguous qualifier on the museum, one fitted to his own liking. But just as cave paintings move to papyrus and then to clay and then on to bits in ones and zeros, art transcends borders. Even the skin becomes the canvas as artists in a variety of fields hone their talents in apprenticeships before moving on to body art, where the body becomes a sort of portable show where people of all backgrounds can enjoy the work of the artist. The anthropologist Enos Schildkraut wrote, the relationship of tattooing to other art forms in contemporary Western culture is more than a trivial fad precisely because of the powerful materiality of the body. In a world where virtual bodies seem to be everywhere, body art represents a sustained effort to reverse the dematerialization of art by making the body matter. In other words, while the Mona Lisa could once only be seen by those who could travel to a far off museum, now the Mona Lisa can be seen everywhere thanks to the mobilization of mediums on which the piece can travel. In this way, artists in the tattoo field play a vital role in sharing art with the rest of the world. Bringing out uh, the art, you know, of whatever culture or, or you know, like when you do like a, a painting, like do like an old Michelangelo statue or something. It's already a work of art. So if you could recapture that in a tattoo, it just makes an awesome tattoo. I, um, my mom told me that I liked tattoos since I was five. That it just, I mean, I think it's always been an art thing. I was fascinated by it. I've been obsessed with Disney since I was 
can remember since I could even walk. I mean, we would go every single year and it was something, um, just something that's very dear to my heart with my family and something that just I love so, so much. And so I knew I want to do something. I want to do something Disney related. I just had to figure out what it was and I would be my favorite princess with Snow White. And she was the first one. She started it all, the whole company basically. So I enjoy the artwork. You're just human. So, you know, tattoos not going to take away from anything or make you anything. It's just, it's, it's, it's art. Uh, I'm on printing right now, but I'm an artist overall, yeah. Okay. Everything I got is pretty much my own art. I'm more into like the dark side of things, like uh, evil, stuff like that. I tattoo, I paint, I do pottery, um, glass beads, I sculpt in bronze. I also work in like direct sculpting clay, so I kind of feel like it's, you know, another medium that, that I do along with other things. I would say I'm a mom first. And, and an artist and tattooing is part of what I do. Far from the biker bars and rock concerts that Austin Prey describes, artists like Janice Ernstein Weissman has had her tattoo-centric work featured in galleries across the world, like New York's Jenkins Johnson Gallery, Gallery Furstenberg in Paris, Ha Bima National Theater in Tel Aviv, and has been featured in American Art Collector and Art Week and Art in America. In an interview with Bound by Ink, Weissman noted about women with tattoos, saying, I do believe that my model's bodies are like a painting, and I'm basically doing a painting of a painting. It is their commitment to art that I'm honoring. Art often moves us in ways that shakes our very foundations, the very fiber of our being. St. Thomas Aquinas said, The knowledge of God is to all creatures what the knowledge of the artist is to things made by his art. Michelangelo, who painted the Sistine Chapel, said, I am a poor man and of little worth who is laboring in that art that God has given me in order to extend my life as long as possible. Perhaps there is no greater motivator in art than belief. Or maybe as Woody Allen would say, non-belief. Either way, religion and spirituality play a vital role in the daily life of every human being. Whether it's institutional faith like Catholicism or Christianity, Eastern faiths like Buddhism or Taoism, or the belief of non-belief, everyone holds to certain presuppositions that make up their morality and general worldview, and tattoos are no stranger to religious belief. The Smithsonian reports that the earliest known examples of tattooing go back to the days of the Iceman and his tattoo patterns. Archaeologists and scholars discovered this prehistoric man frozen in ice near the Austrian-Italian border in 1991, and carbon dating dated him around 5,200 years old. Many religious traditions have specific calls for or against tattooing. Neo-paganism, Wicca, and Hinduism encourage tattooing, whereas Sunni Muslim, Mormonism, and Judaism specifically condemn the practice. Christianity, the most practiced faith in the U.S., has a more complicated position, and it differs across denominations and across generations. A disagreement that is not doctrinal in nature, but comes from a reading of ancient Hebrew text. Still, tattooing transcends the traditional borders of religion and spirituality, and people with tattoos often have a vocal position on their artwork with regard to their belief system or lack of belief system. It was common for those we interviewed to comment on their religion, whether or not we asked them. In most cases, their tattoos served as an outward manifestation of their very personal inward beliefs. Um, faith in the praying hand kind of got when I was going through a hard time when I was younger, battling like just partying and drugs and whatnot. I was raised a Jehovah's Witness, so I, I very, very strict, very high morals. Um, my parents have my daughter like a good amount of the time now because I had her when I was young. The way they raise her, they raise her Jehovah's Witness, and I, I think it's awesome because it's good morals. Um, not for me. I don't follow it anymore, but I still like to think that I raise my kids with the same high morals. And um, one of those parents, I don't think you should cuss in front of your kids. I don't. Um, very, I, I guess, in a way, old-fashioned. Um, I'm Native American, half Native American, so 
I have uh, an Indian Army, of course. And then uh, this one here is a David from David and Goliath. I'm not a religious person, but I think there's a lot of Davids facing a lot of Goliaths. I'm just, I'm into anything dark. Uh, I'm not really that religious, so I really have no boundaries as far as all that goes, so. Well, where I am, there's quite a few people are, well, most everyone I would say is religious, like Christian. Um, so a lot of crosses, um, phrases from the Bible, I get that a lot. Um, you know, I'm in the Bible Belt, Midwest, so. I, I am a believer in Jesus. I love Jesus. I, I, I am a Christian. I do my best to serve him, to follow him. I make mistakes, I trip and I fall, and I love the Lord. That's just what I'm about. That's my view on, that's my, that's my, not religion, that's my, that's my life, basically. Now, between Christian groups, there exists a wide gap between what the faith teaches about tattooing and what people believe the faith teaches about tattooing. This confusion is rooted in one verse from the Hebrew text of Vayikra, or more commonly called Leviticus. In this famous Judeo-Christian text, Moses writes, You shall not make any cuts in your body for the dead, nor make any tattoo marks on yourself. This reading has kept tattooing illegal in states like Oklahoma, where the law was only recently overturned in 2006. But not all Christians agree on the interpretation of this text. In fact, many, like the Christians at ReligiousTattoos.net, believe the verse is taken out of context. With pagan practices and God's prohibitions against adopting those practices, in verse 28, God is warning the Jewish people about a pagan practice at funerals, where pagans would mutilate or mark themselves to appease their false gods. The pagans hoped that by cutting themselves and marking images or symbols of idols on their bodies, that they would obtain favor in the afterlife from their false gods, both for themselves and for those who just died. As no one with a Christian tattoo is trying to pacify a pagan deity, it is safe to say this verse is not relevant to us. Most of our spiritual beliefs come from our youth and our upbringing. They're handed down from generation to generation. Sometimes we veer off the path of our parents only to return. Sometimes we start our own path. But regardless of how we end up, one thing is for sure. We all started with a family. And whether that family was valiant or vicious, our family and upbringing play a significant role in who we are today. For the live canvas and artists alike, Family plays a major role in the artwork. Family and the family network range from biological or genetic family to the nuclear or in-home family, and in many cases, the street family, gangs. In some cases, family members can be found on parts of the body as a commemorative statement or memorabilia, and the portraits can be drawn freehand or from a picture. Family recognition on tattoos may also be seen in nameplates as a way to recognize the passing or the life of a loved one. Family tattoos are some of the earliest Americana tattoos, but far beyond the traditional mom tattoo, family continues to be a significant factor in tattooing, not just in the artwork, but in the tradition and in the business. My husband does all my work. I've been in the tattoo industry for a little over a year, two years, and yeah, he's done all my ink. I love it. Uh, my dad's a famous tattoo artist, Freddie Negretti, and uh, so I kind of grew up in this business. We come from a, a Chicano background, my father and I. My dad's actually famous for bringing, pioneering this black and gray style. He brought it out of prison and into tattoo shops in the 70s. And he's still famous for that today, and he still manages to be one of the best. Uh, what does the, the term Chicano mean to you? Chicano is like a Mexican American who grew up kind of like on the streets of Southern California. And, uh, you know, there's a, and, and it's bigger than Southern California. We're all over, you know. Uh, and but that's what I think Chicano is. Right on, right Southern on. Southern California. We come from San Gabriel, kind of like east side of Los Angeles. I have son of a gun. 
written here. And uh, this was because uh, I was always kind of a little mischievous when I was young. And so my mom and grandmother, when they would get mad, they would call me a son of a gun. <laughs> so that's where it came from. My head, I got my kids. They're always on my mind, so right there on my head. So, you know, I didn't really want to put them next to anything that's like too wicked or anything like that. So it's the best place for them. And who's this guy I'm looking at? It's Austin. This who's this? Tiffany. I got my mom's name. I got a cross on this side. This side? With uh, my wife's lips. And who's the little Petey? Oh, that's my cousin passed away. <laughs> so you remember him? Yeah. Right on. Yeah, believe it or not, actually, my nephews, oh, they're a huge reason why I get half the ones I get because they love, they love, which is, I don't know if a four-year-old and five-year-old should really love Jack Skellington, but that was one of the main reasons why I got one. It, him and Mickey Mouse, I've got a little Mickey, and then the corpse, you know, which I got a lot of dead things on me, which is funny, but, um, I really, I got them because they sit and they're fascinated with them and they love them and then, Jack, I want to see Jack, I want to, so I almost, you know, they're a huge reason also why I kind of, it's something that I love and I wanted to share it with them and they're so fascinated with it because they're like, what is that? So it's another reason why I got that, so. Well, my mom, she actually cried the first time she saw this. I told her it was henna ink and it was going to come off and then she believed me and I was like, shit, no, nah, it's real. You got me. And she cried and she hated it and then I got this, uh, this mom kind of for a little peace offering. Obviously, family kind of speaks for itself. Uh, my family crest, uh, I come from a blended family, a stepdad, whatnot, and we kind of, you know, we wanted our own family crest, so we made our own, and he got hit, his tattoo with me, my stepbrother has it, and I have it. Um, this upper one with the waves and whatnot, my brother was kind of a fuck up, for lack of a better word, and got his shit together, and on the back it says Puta Vida Mi Hermano, which in Costa Rica, Puta Vida is pure life. And so I got Pure Life, my brother, with waves because me and him surf together constantly. Yeah, he's actually, uh, he's about to be a firefighter, so he's gotten his stuff together. Um, and then I got a little uh, diamond for my wife with her. It's her birthstone, Amethyst. I lost a little brother to gang violence. Um, I have him here, Lorenzo. Um, he was only 16, you know, so in my eyes, he was innocent, no matter what he was involved in. I also got him here. Um, this like kind of captures him as a who he was, you know. Yeah. And I ain't mad at that, you know. It's interesting how much we all have in common. We all have families. We love art. We hold our deepest feelings about God and cosmology very dear and sacred. And these feelings create our identity. And we each feel the need to express our identity our way. So even though we live in different neighborhoods, we work in different jobs, and we speak different languages, we each find the need to share who we are with others, sometimes passively and other times less so. But even our very need to find our different identities and to express our identity in different ways is exactly the core of what makes us the same.